Hello, this is Celia Brown with the Bureau of Senior Services. I want to welcome you to the Aged and Disabled Waiver HIPAA training, which stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, does this apply to waiver? Is my first question. The answer is yes, it does apply to waiver. Does this HIPAA apply to you? The answer is yes, it does apply to you as a worker who is working in the Agent Disabled Waiver Program. In 1996, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act was enacted by Congress. This act requires certain standards to be met when dealing with electronic records. Also, the HIPAA privacy rule took effect in 2003. The privacy rule established regulations for the use and disclosure of protected health care information. Let me give you a couple of examples. Tell me, how many of you in this training session have ever completed a HIPAA consent form when you go to your doctor's office? What you're doing is you're giving your doctor the permission to release medical or personal information that belongs to you. You have a right to say no. And this is one example of HIPAA that maybe you have encountered in your personal life. A second is how many of you have had to stand a certain distance from the window at the pharmacy so you cannot hear an individual's name call. When you go to the pharmacy, the pharmacist is going to call Mr. Jones because your prescription is ready. Um, they don't want you to be close so you can hear that information as well because they're trying to protect the person who's getting the prescription filled, their privacy under the HIPAA law. There are several things that we're going to talk about today, and the purpose of this training that I want to make sure that you understand are as follows. I want you to understand, first, confidentiality. Second, I want you to understand HIPAA. Third, I want you to understand rights and accountability that falls under HIPAA, and lastly, to understand reporting of any complaints or any accidental mistakes. Your agency will have a HIPAA policy, so it is your responsibility as an agency employee or as an employee of a member to ask the agency about a HIPAA policy that's specific to your agency. There are general HIPAA requirements, but agencies who provide medical care are required to have a policy that specifically outlines how things are handled at the agency where you work. For example, who is the privacy officer at the agency? How do you report complaints or if you have made an error and released some information that you should not have? And so you need to make sure that you know what that policy is and know what to do about it. Learn the specific HIPAA procedures and requirements at your agency. It's important to know what to do and what you can or can't do at your agency and also under the HIPAA policy and HIPAA rules. Know how to follow your agency's HIPAA and confidentiality rules. And know exactly how to report HIPAA or confidentiality issues at your agency. If you find that, that an error has happened, that you've released something you shouldn't have, or if you are aware that someone else has done that as well, it is your responsibility to report to the agency about a HIPAA problem. First, I want to talk about some privacy tips that will help keep you in line with HIPAA um, and um, uh, will help you be compliant with HIPAA as well. Do not disclose sensitive medical information. And by sensitive information, I mean the following. A diagnosis such as diabetes or a cardiac uh, diagnosis um, and any medical condition that this person has. And this, we're talking about the recipient of the waiver services that you're working with. We don't want, under HIPAA, to release that information without that person's uh, consent. And there is a formal process at the agency for releasing any of that. Do not discuss personal information. 
Don't talk about the member's personal information in the hallway. It's so easy to get caught up in that. Um, you see a, a supervisor or a nurse in the hallway, and you begin talking about that. Um, pull away and go into a closed office so you're not sharing information and, and people are hearing about that member's personal information. It's on a need-to-know basis. Um, don't talk about the personal information with family or friends of the member. Um, you don't have a, a right to do that, to release that. Particularly do not release this information or talk about it in public places. You don't know who can overhear, particularly if you're in a small community. It could be someone's friend, a neighbor, or a relative who hears that information. Don't text, email, or use social media to discuss the waiver member. Don't have this person on your Facebook. Don't talk about the person on your Facebook page. This is critical because this is definitely is an issue with privacy of the member. Don't put it in an email. Don't mention this member name or the information about them in text messages. Do not leave personal or medical information in plain view. For example, you want to leave your plan of care or your personal attendant log sheet or service plan laying in a back seat. If you're carrying it in, you don't want to lay it on a counter so everyone can see it. Your responsibility is to protect the privacy of the person that you are serving under the waiver program. Privacy versus security. What is the privacy rule? The privacy rule relates to the information specifically. Protected health information. You cannot release information about that person's health care without their consent. This is anything oral, spoken, anything on paper, or anything that's in an electronic format, which would be emails, um, something like that. What's the security rule? This relates specifically to the security of information. They call this also safeguards. It is protected health information. This, again, cannot be released without a consent. The security aspect applies only to electronic information, which would mean um, if there's electronic information around billing or emails, um, anything that's electronic. Protected health information, otherwise known as PHI, you may see that written or you may hear people talk about PHI, that you can't release PHI. What does that, what, how do you know what PHI means? Well, here's a good idea. If, you, if you're looking at this, the protected health information, specific information about that person, you're looking at names, looking at social security numbers, email addresses, medical records, driver's license numbers, health insurance beneficiary numbers, account numbers, and telephone numbers. All of those areas are considered PHI information and must not be released. You will find that many agencies will have a confidentiality agreement that you'll need to sign. And so you should ask an agency about that. Make sure that you do that. And this is a formal agreement that guarantees that you know what you're not supposed to release as far as confidentiality goes and what you can do. Um, it's a formal agreement that you sign and someone at the agency will sign as well. Usually these type of agreements are signed at the point that someone is hired and they begin employment with the agency. It is an agreement for you to protect the protected health information, the PHI, that is entrusted to you by your agency. They are expecting you to protect this information, and so you're agreeing that you won't release this. It is a promise that you won't disclose any personal or any medical information or to not use this personal information unnecessarily. Again, I'll say this, this line again. It is need-to-know basis, and we do not have a right to release information without that member's agreement. What is your responsibility with HIPAA? 
you need to read and understand confidentiality agreements. Don't just sign them and date them. Look at it, read it, and know what is in them. Know what you're signing agreement to. Know what you're committing to. It is your responsibility to follow the policies and procedures at the agency. So first you have to know what they are to be able to follow them. Ask questions if you don't understand. Don't assume you understand. Your opportunity to do that is at the point of at the end of this training for HIPAA and when you're signing your confidentiality agreements. It's a good opportunity to ask someone at the agency what your questions are. Give specific examples if you need further clarification. Report any complaints to your privacy officer at your agency. The agency may not call that person a privacy officer. Um, it may be uh, a HIPAA uh, representative um, or there may be someone specific to the agency that they have assigned this type of a role. So if you have a complaint that someone's confidentiality has been breached, you need to report this immediately as well. Do not disclose any information regarding the person. Report any mistakes that accidentally expose information to your supervisor immediately. We understand that people are human and that errors may happen. Um, we accidentally expose information. Um, sometimes when you're clicking on an email address, someone may accidentally click on the wrong one. And so once you know that mistake's been made, made you need to let someone know so they can take the appropriate action for follow-up with this. What is the ADW person's rights? This person on the waiver program has a right to confidentiality with their medical records. They have a right with personal identifying information. Therefore, you are not to disclose Medicaid numbers, social security numbers. You're not to disclose medical conditions or diagnoses or that the person is receiving waiver services or even Medicaid. You're not to tell them what they are getting. Um, you can't go into um, an apartment building and say, you know, I'm the waiver uh, homemaker or worker and I'm coming for Mr. Jones. Um, it's not something that you can release as well. What can you do with this? How can you ensure that you are following HIPAA? The first thing you need to do is to be organized. It's so easy to lose track, particularly of paperwork. So to prevent any loss of information, make sure you know where your documents are. Don't keep them in the back of a trunk, in the back of a car, or haphazardly um, uh, stuffed into a file carrying it around um, into the person's home. It's important to be organized, know where the information is, and keep it um, in a um, file or something that's covered. The other thing is if you do lose paperwork, you need to report it immediately. That's all a part of being responsible and being organized. The next thing that you need to do is be careful. Most security breaches are due to simple mistakes. So you need to be cautious and make sure that you're double-checking things. Check email addresses. Check phone numbers or for faxing or emailing. Make sure that you have the right information. If you do things quickly, sometimes it's a reason to um, increase your error, errors. So um, make sure you double-check those so it's going to the right person. Um, I have had, you know, things come to me that shouldn't have and it is an error that someone has sent it to the wrong place. So you want to make sure that when you do this that you're very careful and cautious about that. Because you wouldn't want someone to release your information as well. Be skeptical. Don't be afraid to ask questions if someone asks about someone else's protected health care information. Even if the person is an employee of the state or a department, it does not matter. Um, it is a need to know basis with HIPAA. And if someone is asking you about the person's information, whether it be a landlord asking information, 
um, you know, can you give me the person's social security number? It's not your right or your ability to release that information. It is up to the member, and in the member's um, absence, if that person has a legal representative and are unable to represent themselves, then that person would be responsible to do that as well. As a worker, that's not something that you can do. Next is be honest. Everybody makes mistakes. It's a given that at some point we are going to have mistakes. So what's important is to acknowledge when it happens, let someone know, um, let your supervisor know so they can report it to the appropriate people at the agency so they can deal with it. Um, but the important thing is being honest about it. Lastly, what you can do is learning from your mistakes. If you do the same thing over and over and over, you're not learning, and that's a problem. If you have a problem with the process, you need to let someone know what that problem is. If you don't understand it, if you need clarification, if you need help with it, let someone know so they can help you understand what needs to happen so you're not making that mistake over and over. Knowing the right way makes it a whole lot easier to do it the right way. So it's important to be well informed and learning from our mistakes so we just don't do it over and over and over. Here are some questions. Can I tell Mrs. Jones' daughter about her heart condition? The answer is no, because the heart condition is a medical condition, and HIPAA prohibits us releasing that information without the AD waiver person's consent. Can I tell the neighbor that I'm a waiver, Medicaid waiver provider for Mrs. Jones? The answer to that question is no. You can't release that information because that falls under HIPAA as well. Can I give Mrs. Jones a security number to the landlord? The answer is no. That falls under the protected health care information or PHI. Can I take Mrs. Jones' paperwork with me to my son's baseball game to finish filling it out? The answer is no. If you're taking paperwork to a public place, then there is a potential that someone could see the information and it would be a breach in security. In summary, with HIPAA, I want you to walk away with the following items and know that this is very important. So looking at these things, what's important to understand about HIPAA? It's very simple. You need to protect the waiver participant's personal information. Do not disclose the waiver participant's personal information. Do not disclose the waiver participant's medical information. Only use necessary information, and that's for personal identifying, which is your PHI, and that is the Medicaid number or security number, or any medical information. If it's not something you need, it's not our business to use that as well. Report any accidental mistakes to your security officer at the agency or whoever is in charge of HIPAA. Report any complaints to your security officer at the agency or whoever is in charge of that as well. The complaint may come from the member themselves. They may say, I had a worker who was releasing my information and telling someone in the grocery store about me. 